Hey everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of celiac disease. So we're going to talk about what celiac disease is. We're also going to talk about some of the pathophysiology behind the condition. And then we're going to talk about a very, very long list of symptoms that can occur with celiac disease. So what is celiac disease? Celiac disease is also known as gluten-sensitive enteropathy and celiac sprue. It is a gastrointestinal disease involving autoimmune destruction of small bowel mucosa, leading to malabsorption and changes in bowel habits. So very key here is that it is an autoimmune condition that is triggered by something. And that trigger is the gluten breakdown product gliadin or gliadin. So what happens is there's a triggering of an inflammatory response when the small bowel mucosa is exposed to this gluten breakdown product. And then what happens is the small bowel mucosa gets inflamed and destroyed. And this can lead to a multitude of problems because the small bowel mucosa contains villi and microvilli. And these are these finger-like projections from the small bowel mucosa. They increase the surface area of the small intestines in order to improve absorption. So if we start to lose some of these finger-like projections, we can lose some of that surface area and lose our ability to absorb nutrients properly. So that's a big problem here. And what happens is that malabsorption leads to changes in bowel habits. We're going to talk about that in more detail in the next slide. And the part of the small intestine that gets most affected or most commonly affected is the proximal small intestine or the small intestine that is closest to the stomach, the duodenum or the duodenum. So that is the part of the small intestine that is most commonly affected. Now let's talk about some of these signs and symptoms of celiac disease. Now that we know what happens, we can understand some of these symptoms as to why they happen. And we're going to notice that many systems in the body are going to be affected by celiac disease. And one of the main systems in the body is the gastrointestinal system because this is a gastrointestinal disease. So because of that malabsorption, we're going to have issues with diarrhea. And diarrhea is actually the most common symptom of celiac disease. It is often a watery or semi-formed stool, and it's foul-smelling, so it smells very bad. And diarrhea is going to be a chronic or recurrent issue, so it's going to be something that's long-lasting in a patient's life. And as we mentioned before, this diarrhea is going to be caused by malabsorption. So because nutrients are not being able to be absorbed as well as they should, they're going to be left in the gastrointestinal system or in the gastrointestinal lumen. And they're going to eventually end up in the large intestine. And because they're in the large intestine, bacteria are going to digest them and water is going to flow toward those nutrients. And that's why we're going to get watery diarrhea. This leads us on to abdominal pain. This is another very common symptom of celiac disease. It's described as a crampy pain and it occurs with these bowel habit changes. And this abdominal pain may be severe or it may not, but a lot of times it can be severe for these patients. So again, diarrhea, watery stool, and abdominal pain, that can be severe and it co-occurs with this diarrhea. Continuing in the gastrointestinal system, we're going to see issues with flatulence. And flatulence is going to be caused by intestinal bacteria digesting unabsorbed nutrients. We just mentioned that in the last slide. Those unabsorbed nutrients are going to end up into the large intestine and there's a lot of bacteria in the large intestine, and they're going to digest those unabsorbed nutrients and produce gas, and we're going to see flatulence being an issue here. Another related sign we're going to see with celiac disease is borborygmus. So what is borborygmus? Borborygmus are loud gastrointestinal noises, so you're going to hear a lot of noises and a lot of gurgling sounds from the stomach. And again, this is caused by intestinal bacteria digesting unabsorbed nutrients. So those intestinal bacteria are going to digest those unabsorbed nutrients and produce gas, and that gas is going to travel through the gastrointestinal system, and you're going to hear it. So there's going to be a lot of gas in the gastrointestinal system. This is going to lead us into distension and bloating, and again, because of large amounts of gas within the gastrointestinal tract, which is from all that intestinal bacteria digesting those unabsorbed nutrients. And we're also going to see weight loss, and that's because of issues with malabsorption. It's an unintentional weight loss, and in children, in young children specifically, we're going to see failure to thrive. So they're not going to grow as well as they should. And this weight loss occurs in a significant portion of celiac disease patients. Roughly 45% may experience some weight loss. Some may compensate by eating more or increasing their dietary intake. And we've mentioned malabsorption. But what is being malabsorbed? What 
are the nutrients that are not being absorbed properly. These include vitamin B12. So we can see a vitamin B12 deficiency in celiac disease. This is going to lead to a macrocytic anemia and neurological symptoms. And some of these symptoms can include fatigue and depression. Folate is absorbed in the proximal small intestine. And as we mentioned before, the proximal small intestine is affected in celiac disease most commonly. So we're going to see issues with folate absorption. We're going to see folate deficiency in celiac disease. This is going to lead to a macrocytic anemia as well. Another element that is absorbed in the proximal small intestine is iron. In celiac disease, we're going to see issues or an increased risk of iron deficiency. And iron deficiency is going to lead to iron deficiency anemia. And calcium is also absorbed in the proximal small intestine. So we're going to see issues with calcium absorption. So we're going to see calcium deficiency. And we can see certain signs and symptoms with calcium deficiency. We're going to talk a bit more about this in the next couple slides, but some of them include Jafal's text sign and neurological symptoms as well. Now, in some cases of celiac disease, the terminal ileum may be affected. The terminal ileum is the last portion of the small intestine before the large intestine, and that is the location where fat-soluble vitamins are absorbed. And one of those fat-soluble vitamins is vitamin D. So we can see a vitamin D deficiency in celiac disease, and this is going to lead to some characteristic bone health disorders. We're going to talk about these later on as well. And then celiac disease patients may also have vitamin K deficiency. Vitamin K is another fat-soluble vitamin. So if there's a vitamin K deficiency, there can be increased risk of bleeding. And we can also see increased risk of bruising and some petechiae and purpura as well. So there are a lot of signs and symptoms that can occur with each of these deficiencies. So if you want more information, please check out my lesson on each of these topics. Now we mentioned that celiac disease can lead to anemia. And I want to bring this up here because it's a relatively common complication of celiac disease. Roughly 10 to 15% of patients with celiac disease are going to have anemia. It can be iron deficiency anemia, so we can see microcytic anemia where the red blood cells are smaller, or we can see anemia secondary to B12 and or folate deficiency, which causes macrocytic anemia or where the red blood cells are larger in size, or we can see a mixture of macrocytic and microcytic anemia as well. If you want more specific details on anemia, please check my lessons on those topics. Some of the signs and symptoms of anemia can include the following, shortness of breath, fatigue, pallor. In the case of iron deficiency anemia, we can see spoon-shaped nails. And with vitamin B12 deficiency, we can see issues with some of those symptoms we talked about before, depression and fatigue. So it's important to determine what deficiency is causing the anemia. And we've briefly mentioned this as well. Fatigue is also a common symptom of celiac disease. This is due to poor general nutrition. As we've mentioned before, there's a lot of nutrients that are not absorbed properly. But it may also be secondary to anemia, as we mentioned before. Anemias can lead to fatigue. We can also see osteopenia and osteoporosis developing in celiac disease patients, particularly later on in their life. So this can be due to vitamin D deficiency and calcium deficiency. We mentioned that celiac disease can lead to malabsorption of both vitamin D and calcium. So both vitamin D and calcium are important in bone health. So if we're not getting enough of either of them, we're going to see issues with bone thinning. So osteopenia is when the bones are thinner than normal. And we can detect this on a bone mineral density scan, so BMD. And osteopenia doesn't necessarily mean that a fracture is going to occur or that the bones are more fragile. It just means that they're on their way to becoming thinner and thinner over time and eventually going to osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is when the bones themselves are prone to fracture. And essentially, if a patient does fall, Perhaps an older patient, if they fall and break their femur bone, the femur is the largest bone in the body, if that fractures, they automatically have a diagnosis of osteoporosis. So osteoporosis means that the bone has become so thin that it's fragile and is prone to fracturing. We talked about neurological symptoms being something that can happen in celiac disease patients. Some of these neurological symptoms are due to hypocalcemia, and these include weakness, sensory loss, and paresthesias, so that numbness, tingling sensation in parts of the body. Peripheral neuropathy can also occur. This is more due to a vitamin B12 deficiency. And ataxia can also occur in celiac disease patients. Headaches can also occur in celiac disease. These are chronic and recurrent. They are migraine headaches, so they are unilateral, so one-sided, pounding, severe headache that is often associated with aura and some other symptoms, including nausea and vomiting. If you want more information on migraine headaches, please check my lesson on that topic. 
the interesting thing to note here is that gluten may be a trigger for these individuals. So gluten may be triggering migraine headaches, and these migraine headaches may be an early sign of celiac disease. So they might not have had some of those gastrointestinal symptoms we talked about before, but they may be having some headaches and gluten may be the trigger. And this may lead to celiac disease in the future. We can also see issues with aphthous ulcers. So these are sore ulcers in the mouth. You can see one in this image here. And they often are recurrent, so they can occur over and over again. An interesting skin manifestation that can occur in some celiac disease patients is something called dermatitis herpetiformis. So this is what dermatitis herpetiformis looks like. It is an autoimmune cutaneous eruption of inflammatory papules and vesicles. And these papules and vesicles are intensely pruritic, which means that they are very, very itchy. They occur in a subset of celiac disease patients. Roughly 10 to 20% of celiac disease patients will have dermatitis herpetiformis. But it's important to note that all patients with dermatitis herpetiformis have celiac disease. So only a subset of all celiac disease patients will have dermatitis herpetiformis, but all patients with dermatitis herpetiformis have celiac disease. And we can also see hormonal issues in celiac disease. In females, this manifests as delayed menarche. So if a younger patient has celiac disease, they may have delayed menarche. And female patients can also have amenorrhea. More specifically, secondary amenorrhea can happen. And this is where an individual has had a period, they've had normal menstrual periods in the past, and then all of a sudden they stop having a period, and they stop having a period for at least six months. That is the definition of amenorrhea. And then females with celiac disease can also have issues with infertility, so difficulty getting pregnant. And then in males, celiac disease can cause impotence and also issues with infertility as well. So if you want to learn more about celiac disease, what causes it, some of the risk factors, how it's diagnosed and treated, please check out my lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.